Okay, welcome to the Monday, August the 1st, 2022 meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. We'll let committee members and staff introduce themselves. Martha Smirsky, member. Benjamin Cheney, member. Meredith Crandall, staff. Stephen Everett, member. Eric Gilbertson, member. At this point, we will let Meredith review the remote meeting procedures and process. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen here um, and put up a little presentation that's more for people who are watching via ORCA, but there's going to be some pointers that I give about how we are going to um, work this that is helpful for everybody who's on remotely. Um, all right, so for those viewing this meeting via ORCA Media, you can participate in tonight's design review committee meeting via the Zoom platform, either through either the video or telephone access options. So for video um, and using the Zoom platform, there's this link here. Um, you can also dial in this phone number and plug in this meeting ID when it's requested. Um, oh, and there we go. Sorry, somebody's asking to be let in. Um, if you have problems accessing the meeting, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. I will be monitoring my email throughout tonight's meeting. Um, and you also have this option here to get all of the city, all the meeting information. Um, for those attending via Zoom, turning on your video is optional. Um, and if you're having issues with the sound, sometimes turning off your video will let the sound um, come through clearer. It just reduces your bandwidth usage. For everyone attending, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will reduce background noise. If you're on via the Zoom telephone option, um, you can press star six to mute and unmute your phone. Um, please reserve the Zoom chat function just for troubleshooting or logistics questions. Any questions or comments on an actual application should be um, verbal. You can raise your hand either physically or by using the raise hand button on your Zoom toolbar. Um, and then if you're on the phone um, and calling in for comments, then you know, during a break, you can state your name and say you have a comment. Although so far, everybody we have on tonight is applicants. So we'll know what you're talking about. Um, okay, I'm just going to just quick scroll through. Yeah, we just have applicants on right now. So um, in the event that I find out that there are members of the public unable to access this meeting, it will need to be continued to a time and place certain. Um, and that's all I've got. So I'm going to hand the meeting back over to the chair, Steve. Thank you. Um, and hold on one second. I'm just going to double check. Oh, okay. uh, Lauren, is that you dialing in from the seven nine three six six one nine? Um, I yeah, I've been on the line for a couple minutes now. Yep. No. Nope. Just double checking because I didn't have your phone number in front of me. I thought I remembered it. All right. Thanks, Lauren. Yeah. We're going to let. Steve... Oh, thank you. Sorry for the confusion. Oh, it's okay. We're going to let Steve open it up, and then you'll be up. Perfect. At this, at this point, if many members have had a chance to look at the agenda, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? So moved, to Derek. All second. All in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Martha. Ben, Eric, and Steve. So we'll move forward to the first application for 45, 44 to 50 Main Street. Applicant Lauren Andrews for three new signs. Lauren, go ahead and describe your application for us. Hi, thanks for everybody. Um, I'm calling from Portland, Maine right now, having a little vacation. Um, I put in an application because I'm going to be opening up Capital Cannabis Company in the former Bailey Road space. And I'm going to be moving Aramed Essentials from my 8th State Street location to the former Zenith space, which is right next door to the Capital Cannabis spot. Um, and uh, we we're going planning on painting the exterior of the space and um, putting up new signs for Capital Cannabis and moving the current sign from 8th State Street for Aeromed to the new space at 50 Main. Did you hear me okay? 
Yeah. yeah, sorry. Everybody's looking at the giving, giving another look at the printed packets that they have. We don't have any of our oh, D members remote tonight. Everybody's here in per, or DRC. Sorry, design review members in okay. uh, remote. They're all in person, so they're all looking at their oh, nice. their packets um, and uh, doing a double check while you were describing the project. So they're all just reviewing it right now. They're not ignoring you. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm looking at the post picture where you have the pa it's painted. And all the way over in the right, I see that it's painted all the way to the floor or to the sidewalk. Is that brick now or is that wood? That's wood. Okay. I, I can't tell. From we're, not, we're, not, we're not painting any brick. Okay, good. Thank you. That's, that was my concern. Yeah, no, I like brick. We keep as much of that as we can. Hi, Lauren. Um, I'm curious about the placement of your uh, of your signs, specifically the Aeromed sign. Is that I'm looking again at the same uh, same image and wondering if uh, that's the intentional placement centered over the window? Uh, yes, because we thought we thought about we looked at it centered over the door and thought that would be I I like the aesthetic of it better, but I think it'd be terribly confusing because it's a door for both businesses. Yep. And I don't want people who want to go into the cannabis shop to look up, see Aram at Essential Sign, and be confused. Um, so we ditched that idea. Ben, when you look at the door, that bay window to the left of the door is a foyer. Yeah. And then once you yeah. go to the foyer, the door is in that divider to the three windows to the left, which would be Capital Cannabis. Correct. And then do you intend to move any of the lighting or are you going to have leave the no, lights I have no are and have them be I'll off. leave the lights as they are. Yeah, yep. I'll leave the lights alone. You could actually angle, leaving the lights where they are, you could angle the shade over to light up both the Aramed sign and the Capital Cannabis sign by moving yeah, heads, that's heads of the goosenecks. Yeah, agreed. That we, we kind of scoped that out. I had a, an electrician take a peek up there, and uh, that's why we determined that there was no need to remove them when you can angle them just as much much more easily. And quick question: It looks like the Aramet Essential sign fits in. You have a an outline drawn, which looks like and outline for the the sign band on the on the drawing and the aramed sign fits within that and then the capital cannabis sign looks larger than the space in that outlined space um it's a little bit larger just because of the shape of the logo um the 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 capital cannabis logo. I wish I had it in front of me. I don't have that, um, but I think it's a little bit wider than the arrow. I, I, I'm not sure that, but there, the it's what determines the size of the sign is the shape of the logo. Is that a thin yellow or green line outlining, sort of detailing the sign band? Correct. We're going to, I'm not sure, I haven't quite landed on the color. I want something that, to contrast the dark teal, uh, but I don't want it to be, a, I'd want it to be just an accent color, nothing that's going to overwhelm it. Mm -hmm. um, we're trying to make it look a little more urban, the exterior with a little more sophistication. So I think that's why we're keeping the, you know, the, the paint color rather dark. Um, and like I said, the band, the band color, I'm not sure. We kind of put the, I have a, you know, several um, brand colors. One of them is a highlight color of a, like a, almost like a little lime green that really kind of pops against the dark teal. And we thought that would be, um, you know, we played around with different band colors and that one seemed to complement the um, dark teal the most without overwhelming it at all. Right. Now, if I look at the existing signs, Bailey Road and Zenith, it looks like the sign band below the lights is recessed there. Is that the case? Yeah. If, if, if I'm but, understanding you, yeah. Steve? So the. So I just want to interrupt for a second because yes. I know where you're going, but I think that 
I think that visual might be a mistake because when I look at the actual sign application form, mm -hmm. it says that the Aramed wall sign is 36 inches high and the Capital Cannabis wall sign is 34 inches high. Oh, okay. So I think that the visual is an error maybe and that the Capital Cannabis sign is actually going to be slightly shorter but wider than the okay. Aramed sign. Yeah. If the dimensions of the sense. chart are correct. And so they should both fit inside that sign band without having to pop out. Okay, that was that was my only question <laughs> because visually on the, the drawing, the capital cannabis sign is taller than the Aramed sign and looks like it does not fit within the sign band. Yeah, I think, uh, I think there's, you got clarification right there. Probably just not to scale on the drawing or something. Okay. That, again, but the actual dimensions should be there are correct. Okay. And we just, our recommendation would be that those, both of those signs fit within the existing sign band. Inside each line band. Yeah. I think we're planning on putting, what is it, like uh, metal frames behind them. Okay. So they don't go right. They'll go. Right, they'll go against the metal frames. They're not going to go against the wood, necessarily. If that makes any okay. sense. I think they'll look nicer too, Lauren, if they're both very close to the same size. And from what yeah, this is telling us, that is true. Rather than this representation, which may be a little off. Okay. Yeah. Because I our our intention was to keep them similar. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you have an also you also you have an overhanging capital cannabis sign. With the blade sign that comes off to the blade, side. Yes, the blade sign. Yeah. Yes. And again, we would recommend that that be balanced within that sign band area as well. The representation shows it higher than the sign band. Yeah, I think the guy who did the quote, you know, he just did it from a picture okay. um our plan is to was put, our plan is to do um put the sign in the same spot that the bailey road blade sign was okay because her, her her blade sign placement was perfect you could see it from way down the road it was it was good so if it's can, not broken don't fix it you can sort of see it in the in the photo of the existing just barely there's like a white line that goes down by the middle decorative column i don't know what you would yep. call that um and so that was the projecting part that came out where it was attached was in the sign band area um so yeah i think the visual representation might be just a little off on that again that's all yeah I yeah i think he, when you put that together it was it was from a photo Yep. So I'm not, I'm not surprised. I hadn't noticed this on the street before. And as I'm looking at these photographs, I'm very interested in what that column is that's separating between Bailey Road and Zenith. It's a, looks to be an old steel column. Um, yeah, it's painted. I think it's painted black. Yeah. Right now. I guess I'm wondering in your paint job, whether there's a way to actually, um, call attention to that because i think it probably is a beautiful mm. thing and that's uh, not i hadn't really thought about that we thought about my maybe repainting it black um if i did want if i did end up painting those i would i probably wouldn't go the lime green route because i think that i like the color but i don't like it that much kind of thing yeah, no i would not um i would press that i, I would <laughs> yeah i think if i i think i i think that um with those columns that wouldn't be appropriate Agreed. Um, if I did paint the columns, I would do uh, probably a more subdued, uh, a more subdued green that would complement the, um, the, the teal. We've got our brand colors and there's this really nice green that looks gorgeous with the teal. That's mm -hmm. a bit more sophisticated. I think that would, if we did paint the columns, I'd go that direction. That has a little bit of contrast and possibly a different sheen to give it a, a little bit of just difference um i hadn't thought about it but having the columns be a little shiny would be nice i think good suggestion i would like to see that column because i think it's beautiful and i've not noticed it before 
Yeah, I mean, if if you're if you're really no, it's hard finding me finding people to talk color with me. If you ever if you want to come come look at color samples with me, come on by. <laughs> I'd be happy to do that. <laughs> It, there's also there's also a really rich looking color called black green that looks very very nice that would fit in with that color scheme for the column, and then again you could, yeah you could use you would want a contrasting color for your the detail for the panels below as well as for the yeah tr- trim the pinstripe around the sign band. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think my my I just want to make sure it doesn't it's not too busy. You know, I I think whatever I do, I have to just make sure that's not the case. The um, pen, pen but yeah, I, I like the idea about the columns though. I'm gonna re I'll rethink that and uh see if we can give those more attention for sure. And I guess to that whether there can be a little bit of separation uh for the capital cannabis blade sign, uh maybe that can the way it's depicted here sounds like maybe not the way you're actually going to do it. And in real life, it's jammed up right close to it and the Bailey road sign, but there seems to be a fair amount of space on the Zenith Aeromed side, whether that capital yeah. cannabis sign could slide over there a little bit. That'd be fine. I, to be honest, we were just doing it because I figured it'd be easier because it's sort of already, I don't know if it's grandfathered is the right term, but I mean, it was, there was a sign hanging there for, I don't know how long was she there? Eight, nine years. And I thought, well, we'll just do it in the same spot because it was okay for Bailey Road. But if there's another spot that you would prefer to have me hang the blade sign, I don't care where I sign it. It's hanging. I mean, it I think if it were it really matter to me. a foot or two right or left of that column, I think that that would be great. Okay. I and mean, it seems like okay. we'll probably take a look have at space it. for that because you're being conservative in your signs. Yeah, you're not using the same yeah. hardware, correct? You're using different hardware. No, we're gonna we're gonna put some a new um, hanging whatever you call it uh, a metal piece to hold the sign. Yeah, because I mean the current one looks like it's right next to. I just pulled it up on on like the Google Street View. The current yeah. is really really close to um, that metal column. I'm gonna pull it up so that the DRC members can see what I'm looking at on the big screen. Maybe if it. The visual works. Um, let me turn off the light real quick. So here's the current hardware right here, and here's that column is right there. And the current hardware is right at that column, like right next to it. Yeah. So yeah you and you think it should be farther away so it doesn't draw attention away from the column? I do, yeah. And Full disclosure, Lauren, I've actually been in your space talking to Michael DeGeorge about railings in there. Um, oh, yeah. And so it would also be possible to, to create a, something that held your sign inside that sign band that was similar to those railings if that felt. Oh, that, yeah, that we should talk. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk. <laughs> All right. Have you considered painting the panel, the sign band and the panels at the bottom a slightly lighter color? Uh, than- Again, I were, I, I, we did some like, a, you know, potential drawings of the sign guy of putting colors in different spots. And I just, I, I just think it looks too busy to have, I like the idea of having it one color with just the highlighted colors that, you know, in the, around the inside of the, I hope I'm using the right terms, but the right, you know, the bands or whatever. I, 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 we experimented a little bit with some of the lower panels being painted, um, that highlight color. And I didn't, I just didn't, I thought it looked kind of cheesy. I didn't like the way it looked. Oh, and, Eric, you'd want the darker color of the sign band with those light signs over it, right? So you were thinking... So there's a difference between the general color of the front and the sign band and the panels. Yeah. Probably a lighter color would probably be... Darker color would be fine. 
just to sort of define yeah. the panels a little, yeah. little yeah. more and the sign band a little more definitely. Yeah. Define the panels on the bottom and the yeah. sign band, in addition to having the pinstripe. Yeah, in, okay. inside the pinstripes. Yep. Yeah, I I think about it. I I um again, I'd have to. There are concerns about it being too busy looking. Well, I'm going to have a lot going on in the window too. You know. Well, just as an FYI, all the stuff on color is just guidance and thoughtful input from people because the design review committee we don't actually have any jurisdiction over color of painting already painted surfaces anymore. Um, yeah. So you're just getting some input and thoughts on the color issues. I no, I appreciate it. Actually, I think that um, maybe we'll play around. And I think maybe I didn't like the inside of the um, those squares being um, colored in because I was just looking at the wrong color. I'm wondering if if we played a little bit more with that idea with more subtle colors. Maybe it would look better. I don't know. Now you've got me thinking. So I, I'm actually going to pay attention to what you have all said and uh, play around a little bit more. Right. Yes, the, you the can. The reason I suggest that it would be it would be less of a monolith in the front. Yeah. In terms of color. You, you can do some. Yeah, it would just. You can do some trial color choices and whatever you and whoever you're consulting with thinks looks. <laughs> The best in that probably location. I'm probably going to be calling Bonnie Everett stat. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've got her on speed dial. I can't say anything <laughs> way or the other about that. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 you guys know this is all great feedback. I'm actually quite appreciative. It's, I've got so much to think about that sometimes, you know, you want, sometimes you just want to make a decision just to make a decision and cross it off the list. So I'll, I'll, I'll dive back into this. Okay. Yeah. So unless anybody has anything else to add, the recommendations were that each of the three proposed signs be placed within the borders of the existing sign band. And then there was a comment that the steel column, and again, this again, because of colors, this is again at her option. This is at her option that the steel column on the, the vertical steel column on the facade can be painted a contrasting color to emphasize the historic, help emphasize the historic character of the building's construction. Yeah, that, no, I, that, I appreciate it. Yeah. And again, that's an option. No, it's, I think it's really thoughtful feedback. So I think, I thank you all. So are we, are we set? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, Steve has to go okay. through go through There's some criteria some and criteria. Okay. For signs in the con design control district, number one, the size, location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material, all exterior signs within the design review overlay district, shall be compatible with the building and structures of the site and surrounding properties. This is acceptable. Where appropriate, signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bands on historic structures. Again, this is within the sign band. If a building has multiple tenants, there shall be consistency in placement and size among all signs acceptable. It is recommended that sign placement be centered over building entries. In this case, you have one entry for two businesses, so the placement in the main window or the center window, as the case is, is acceptable. Sign installation shall minimize damage to character defining materials on the building, acceptable. Sign design color and topography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be the appropriate scale for existing and new buildings, acceptable. Science support structures shall be compatible with the building architecture and must not be overly complex or dominant in and of themselves. That's acceptable. And based on those criteria, do I hear a vote in favor of the application? I vote yes, sir. This is Martha, I say yes. Yes, and Steve says yes. So it's accepted. Four votes in favor. 
Yay. <laughs> Lauren, so this is Meredith. Um, because there is a, there's a recommendation on here that says that they all need to be in the sign band. So that's sort of a permit condition. Normally I would have you sign the form before we issued the permit. When are you gonna be back in the state and able to sign a form or can I scan it to you? Are you somewhere where you have access to print it out and then- No, I'm, com I'm, coming. I'm coming home tomorrow. Okay, okay. So yeah. um, what would you rather email it to you or do you just wanna come into the office tomorrow and sign it? I will, am I gonna get into Montpelier? I actually rather you email it. Okay, perfect. Nope, that's that's fine. We'll e yeah. I'll email it to you, I'll scan it to you and email it to you tomorrow. And then um, you can just sign it and then either, you know, send back an image. It doesn't have to be a PDF scan just so we see your signature on it so that we can then issue the permit. Okay. Okay? Perfect. Awesome. Great. Thank, thank you, Lauren. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you, Aaron. Good have luck. a good night. Good project. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. The next application is for 15 East State Street. Applicant Dan Cypress, Element Real Estate, the replacement of five new signs. So we have Anna Seppel on Zoom. Um, Anna, if you wanna unmute yourself and describe the project. Hi, thank you guys so much for having us. Um, so we're doing a pretty straightforward project. Element Real Estate has acquired Heaney Realtors at 15 East State Street. They're still going to be there. No one's going away. Um, but we just need to put in new signs that reflect the new brokerage. And so we are putting all the signs in the same place. Um, they're all going to be the same dimensions. The only change is the overhead sign is currently an oval and we're just going to be putting in a rectangle but same dimensions same coloring yep same coloring we are removing the green um, but we are using the same blue blue and gold Are these new signs the same material as the existing ones? Yes, they will be. Good job. So there isn't a like a photograph showing what the new ones will look like up. It just goes in the place. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any questions? We got the same colors, same dimensions, same placement. The only thing that the 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 logo is changed to add in the element. Yeah, and really the the main reason this is here is because of the um, shape change mm -hmm. on the um, projecting sign. Because really, if all they were doing was really changing the panel yes. or painting over, mm -hmm. that's all content. Yes. And we wouldn't even issue a permit for that. Right. Um, it really is coming here because of that one, the, the change in shape, because um, the locations are the same, everything else kind of fits, and we can't, you know, yeah, we can't regulate good. content. <laughs> so. You know, unless I've had some big issue with the shape of the one different sign. I'm good with it. I'm, a, I'm, I'm not sure there's much for you guys to do I'm on that one. I'm assuming that.
change in shape of the sign was to accommodate the additional lettering and spacing. Exactly. We tried to do the oval shape just to see, and it looks so awkward. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is the bracket staying the same? Mm -hmm. Yep, we're going to be using the existing bracket. We're trying to make this as simple as possible. <laughs> Unless anybody has any questions, comments, or suggestions, we can go down through the criteria for this one. The size, location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior signs within the design review district shall be compatible with the building and the structures of the site and surrounding properties, acceptable. Where appropriate signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bands on historic structures, these signs are acceptable. If a building has multiple tenants, there'll be consistency in placement and size among all signs, acceptable here. It is recommended that sign placement be centered over building entries. These placements here are acceptable. Sign installation shall minimize damage to character defining materials on the building, acceptable. Sign design, color, and typography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be the appropriate scale for existing and new buildings, acceptable. Sign support structures shall be compatible with the building architecture and must not be overly complex or dominant in and of themselves, where again, acceptable, you're using an existing support for the blade sign. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Eric says yes. Mrs. Martha, I say yes. Ben says yes. And Steve says yes. So four to nothing in favor. Uh, Anna, because there weren't any recommendations or conditions being placed on this, I don't need you to sign the, the review form and we'll just get that permit out as soon as possible. Okay, great. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great Thank night. Thank you and good luck with your project. We can move forward to the next application for 138 Main Street. Welcome back, Sandy. Unexpected and hopefully not substantial change that happened over the weekend. Share it with everybody. Thank you. So there's only two companies. And we are aware of them some of these silos. So make sure you may want to repeat oh, yeah. in the microphone. There are only two companies. Maybe I should talk about it on that item. Yeah. yeah. This is the first item. So you folks were so kind to give a first glance at the um, bunch of things we're next asking for for 138 Main Street. Um, then you weren't here last, last time. Meeting, yeah. So I'm going to just go over them again. Um, also for anyone else who might be listening. Uh, but uh, the good news was we kind of got, kind of began to get familiar with it last time. Um, so um, what changed a couple of flip-flops around last week is that we learned that is it, this is to make energy efficient changes to the building at 138 Main Street. Um, I told people last week that during the energy audit, the person said this was by far the worst building he's ever audited. Like, um, like a lot times worse than the worst building he ever audited. So um, currently it's using, I, I can't remember the number, but more than 6,000 um, gallons of oil a year to heat the building. So, um, Last week, I came in with an airlock, which was approved. And this week, um, we, we, we're kind of doing this as quickly as we can to try to make the changes this fall. So um, I only introduced the other changes because they, they hadn't been submitted in time. And now they're, they're here. So there are um, two related changes and then three other things. So the first one is we now need to make changes to the boiler shed. And then the second is a pellet silo. Both of those are to, to heat the building with wood pellets. And um, the next item 
is condensers. Uh, we also need to insulate the ceiling of the front porch because there's a heated space above it. And then um, the flood vents are insulated. So the first item is uh, unexpected. The good news that came after I last talked to you folks is that we are able to eliminate the oil tank completely. We don't need to keep it as a backup. I was really worried about finding a home for another boiler uh, next to the old boiler to, you know, because of piping, but we're allowed to replace it. So then the next problem was that the boiler is 12 inches taller than the oil boiler. So um, we have to actually raise up the roof and I want to do it 18 inches just because I'd hate to move it with 12 and have it not be quite enough. So um, uh, you'll see the first drawings in my application. There's some background information about the floodplain and the site plan, but then there's um, some drawings for the, or, or is everyone following along with the drawings? The business? Yeah, it's better to use, they're both in the original, but um, these are these are the new revised ones. So what goes along with this is the pellet silo. So the, you've got photographs of the existing um, boiler shed. It makes a lot of sense to keep as much of it intact as possible. So we're just raising up the roof at the boiler shed. Uh, sorry, at the boiler itself, just raising up. And then at the same time, we realize we need to be able to move out the old boiler and put the new boiler in, and that might happen again in the future. So we would like to make an access panel. And the, the thought was to kind of hide it. Uh, it's it's almost door shaped, but you know, make it look kind of look like shutters or something. It could be just blank. If you have any opinion, we're happy to follow that. But um, is the boiler in that rear addition? Yeah, it it was built in I think two thousand one. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why it's kind of tall is because it has to be above the floodplain plus a bit. So. So this, in the new handout I gave to you tonight, it's it's the same, the shed itself is the same as all of the submissions that were um, given last week. But um, the, what's different is the, sh is the silo. So, oh, yep, right there on the site plan. I yep, can so see. I pulled this up on the side. So here's, Thank you. The, here's the silo location generally. The measurements on here are a little off because it's we have the new silo version. And I'm trying to remember, is the black the boiler shed? shed? Yeah, the black here is the boiler shed. So this boiler shed is what's going to be lifted up. So the, this was drawn on the site plan from when they added the boiler shed. So the boiler shed is 140 square feet. And that right. currently exists. That currently exists, right? The roof so, is too low. And the roof is too low for the new wood pellet boiler. The it's ceiling at its highest point is only six feet, two inches tall. <laughs> And the L roof that's 19 feet, that's existing, Sandy? All of it, everything else is existing. The porch, the roof, okay. yep, all of that. The parking existing. lot, okay. the building, be, uh, there's a, the, the old carriage house is the building right down there that Meredith is pointing to. So um, I'm actually, so my red markings are the new overlay on the 2001 drawing that was, um, approved by this group the dark area is the existing shed yeah so it was the addition in 2001 and so all we're doing now is raising half of the roof up 18 inches half of the roof or the half of the roof so that if you look at the drawing she just gave you uh the one two third drawing Here's the current roof level, as I understand it, and here's the new roof level, I think, yeah. right? So the new, there's the current roof level, Correct. right? And that currently goes all the way across. You're just raising it yep. in the back. Yep. We're over this new access panel Yep. that would be insulated. And is that a new, like, chimney space? 
chimney vent thing. We had to take out the old one to be able to put that access panel in. So yep. yes, it's a new, it's, it's actually the exact same chimney. It can be reused. It was the correct diameter. It's just being moved over and it's being raised four feet because um, it has actually was too short for safety. Now I was looking at the side or the, the rear view yes. of that shed yep. where you have two different roof levels. Right. Both of them sloping towards the silo. Right. Would you rather have a single roof, shed roof, to the back so that you're not dumping water and ice and snow? The plumber, between... the plumber was interested in that idea, but there's a huge amount the hot water heater is right next to it because it also has to be out of the floodplain. There's a huge amount of piping on that part of the roof. So when we put everything together, this is what the plumber wanted to do. Oh, okay. So all yeah. that other stuff is attached to the roof. Yeah. It'd just be a huge mess. All the copper piping would have to be removed and then, then come up. And I'm assuming... A, that the silo is going to be left exposed and visible, not boxed in. And that was the idea. And what I submitted last time was this idea, uh, or discussed last time, was putting a lattice end panel on the adjacent porch. And I um, submitted some street views, and then I submitted a lattice sample yeah. for that. So that the idea of that would be that it's screened. Yep. Um, we had been told we could get a black silo. If I can go on to that, is it okay? Do you want to stick to the shed or can I well, talk about the silo? I'm sort of circling back to the shed. I was just. Okay. Yep. So we'll come back to that. So, I, and then I guess I'm also curious, and I'm sorry that I missed the last meeting. Yeah. Um, and certain there's reasons that are dictating the location of the silo versus being able to kind of tuck it into what's labeled the two foot mark right there's there. a door there there's a door there yeah that's preventing that from getting even further around yeah. i think they have to have the door there for emergency or speed, access. pretty much the only access to the basement yeah 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 so um it's definitely the fastest way to get to the boiler if there were anything wrong with the boiler yeah so um, I wish it could be there. I, yeah. There's also a window for an apartment right next to it. So it would be blocking the window as well, right where that little hand is. Yeah. So I wish it could fit there and the owner wanted to fit there, but I think everybody agreed that that, I mean, the, the, it's, the, the stairs are old, like granite bulkhead kind of stairs going down. Uh, it would be very hard to, to remove those or reconfigure them. So um, the best plan seems to be to put the silo right there. Yep. And then you were thinking the black lattice going out this way and then back or uh, diagonal? We had or? just had it on the end wall of that porch. Oh, um, like coming just from coming there, out this way? Back, no, well, just towards the wall to, of the building. So in other words, only the width of the porch and then it would be you oh to block the view just, like through the porch well because that's where if you look at the sequence of photographs walking down the street oh, yeah you can't really because of the tree you can't really see it and um so we thought we were going to get a black silo because that's what they said in ireland that they make and um it turns out they only have green silos so uh but it can be painted and so the assumption is that you would like the silo to be black with a black lattice to, to further hide it, but it, it could be green if you prefer. Is that the actual color, that dark green? Yes, that's exactly it. Yeah. I would be happy just leaving it to dark green. What you can do is you can take you can take the the lattice and actually before you put it up, just spray it or paint it a, I would suggest a black green. It's a color. And again, that's your choice. Make the lattice but green. Make a, a black green color that looks really, really nice. That's the color of the lattice that I'm building on uh, Baldwin mm -hmm. Street. Mm -hmm. 
That could that would be that yep. would be compatible with that green color there, and yet it would function to hide it as well as. I mean, you can attach your lattice so that it's removable to access anything beneath that you need to. Is there a feed tube that goes from the bottom of the silo into the boiler? That's a really good question. I think that, um, How yes. How do you get the pellets to the boiler? Well, the, the major issue is that the, um, the, the um, pedestal has to be five feet, three inches off the ground. And so, because of the flood brain, right. and you can't, um, there's so much weight that you can't just extend the legs because the center part also has to be supported. There are five points of support. So, um, the idea is to just have it enter the building and, and it can be vacuum, it's a vacuum suction to get it to the boiler. Oh, so, okay. I think it will probably enter right next to that access panel okay it will it be protected it, if there's a, a vacuum line going from the silo into the boiler room is there i'm, I'm, I'm assuming there's a, a sizable tube for the pellets to move it's only through. two inches only two inches yeah and so it's going to be over most people's heads because yep. the the no, I, again, I'm just looking, do you need any protection for that? Not that it's a big issue uh, over that tube to protect it from snow ice coming off the shed roof, which pitches in that direction. It's a good question. Um, I, I don't know. I'll have to ask the plumber. Okay. I could always come back here with anything that needs to be um, well, that's, further. That's pretty inconsequential because yeah. it's hidden. It's just an, yeah. a utility access, basically. So looking back and what they do there is thank you yeah. um you don't need to come back for that for the protection for the tube um we're also because of the labor shortage trying to keep the roof changes as simple as possible um we could go the other way but there's so little surface area on that roof it's not a lot of okay dump below so i my hope would be that we could just do it like this and then cover it. But if the, the design review committee strongly would like it to be sloping in the other direction. That's some, that's more of a function of uh, safety and, and functioning of the, of the uh, silo and boiler room. Okay. Yeah. Um, I can't think of any of it. So the rest of the drawings that I'm handing in tonight, um, which you haven't obviously had a chance to look at. So this is the picture of the silo, the cut sheet. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it's bigger than what I discussed last time is they no longer have any more of these eight ton size in the United States <laughs> for five tons. So there's, and there's no five tons. The only other choice would be a three ton. And it's a very negative thing to have too small of a bin Yes. because you get way too much dust and it, it shortens the life of the boiler. So um, uh, it's kind of all or nothing here. <laughs> so, uh, it's, um, is it a larger footprint or just taller? Um, so in your packet, there are two examples, the low and wide and the tall and narrow. Mm -hmm. It's actually between them, both in width and in height. Okay. Um, it's a little closer to the height of the other one, which is how it's getting more volume. But the, those were the two footprint options that I had closed in the packet. If you look up on the screen, there's the two footprint options from the one that was in the packet that was submitted, um, where there's the proposed silo square showing up against the existing shed building, and it has a dotted line for the smaller, the skinnier, taller silo, and then a solid, solid line for the wider, shorter silo. And then in what Sandy just handed us is how it looked so the it's going to peak out. It looks like it's going to peak out a little further from the shed side than this 
skinny, tall silo, but not as far as the short back is what I'm seeing. It's 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 like the um, Goldilocks version. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so. That's a great description. <laughs> yeah, because the, the skinny tall one was going to be really tall, it seemed to me, especially once you added it to get it at yeah. the floodplain. The only other option for outside soil silos in the United States right now is an aluminum, galvanized aluminum silo that's round. And because it's round, it's much, much taller. It was going to be the silo itself was going to be over 20 feet plus the five feet. It would have been 26 feet. And it's starting to look like, you know, the old grain silos at the end of Main Street. So um, <laughs> I, I, we're really hoping this one will work because there's only two more of these in the United States. And Vince is thinking he'll buy both of them, <laughs> one for his house and one for here. <laughs> When are you going to have to put the flood control? Up? Oh, okay. Do, should we go on to the next item? Sure. The condensers, um, we added to that the lattice around them after the last discussion. And there would be two condensers, one on the roof of the building and one on the side. And that, again, it's limited by the flood elevation about where it can be. I'm not sure what else we could do. We're um, trying to get that to be a darker color, not white against the brick. Um, the porch roof, uh, for, because Ben wasn't here last time, uh, there, as far as we can tell, is zero insulation in that porch ceiling, which is the floor of a heated space above. So um, the idea, it, the ceiling is almost 11 feet high. The idea is to take it out, fit, stuff it, completely full with no void, some kind of foam product, and then put the, just because of the R7, and then uh, if we can reuse the boards, uh, bead boards, we will, but probably have to replace them, paint them the same color, and put the trim back around the end, as long as that can be salvaged. Um, then the last item is the flood vents. And this, Building actually does not have to have flood vents, but the engineer highly recommends it because um, in 92, the water did get almost to the first floor and it's a tremendous amount of pressure on the wall. So um, the other aspect of these is that those, the basement windows, quite a few are cracked and they really, some don't have any um, storm window, and so they're a big hole for lack of insulation. So these flood vents that we can buy are insulated, and we would remove all these windows, and we would put in a stud wall and insulate that and put continuous foam on the inside of that. So um, trying to insulate everything as well as possible. Um, and then also at the same time, uh, follow the engineer's advice about putting in the vents. The flood vent opens up with yeah. pressure from what from water pressure. Yes. And the vent is within the window opening. Or it will be entirely. It? The window opens are typically eight inches, eighteen inches high by thirty-two inches wide. Right. And these are eight by sixteen. But the engineer didn't want us to put more than one in per window because they want them spread around the building. Yes. Um, so, yes, they t entirely would fit in, I'm thinking, in one corner, and then the rest would be just all painted black, and we could get black vents. I think they're on that cut sheet. So the idea um, is to try to make it look as much like the old window as possible of just being black. Um, and then I think it was Eric had the good idea of putting some trim around the perimeter to make it look a little bit more like a window. And it's completely fine. We would probably use marine pie wood and then just um, use like epoxy paint. Okay. One quick question, just curi out of curiosity. If, the, if those vents can be opened by the pressure of water, 
what's to keep somebody from taking their foot and pushing it in and climbing into the bit into the base? They'd have to be eight by 16 inches large. That's pretty small. <laughs> yeah. I think that's why they don't have anything larger because I wanted a larger vent, but I couldn't find any. Yeah. I never thought about that till now, but that makes sense. Um, also, we were quite intrigued by Steve's description of what he had done of actually being able to eject water out. And we looked at that, but we can't figure out because we're not adjacent to the river or couldn't figure that one out. So, um, uh, also, if you keep the water out when there's a big amount of hydrostatic pressure on the outside, there's actually more pressure on the walls. And um, Vince is hoping not to do the reinforced interior wall, um, which I personally thought was a good idea. But, you know, it's, it's trying to, everybody makes different decisions. So the idea, and everything's been cleared out of the basement already anyways. So the idea of letting it be a fill area is okay with him. Um, and then he said, then he will use your pump <laughs> to empty it out as soon as the flood is done. <laughs> well, they're very handy when you've got water in there and you, it stops coming in. And basically, if you can, just take a flip a switch and just watch the water go out. <laughs> Well, we just coil a hose, like a fire hose kind of thing, right at the at the the basement door. Then I guess keep it stored there so that it could spit out when the flood goes down. Well, basically, what you can do is where you where you put your pumps in a sump in the basement or just on the floor level in the basement. You come off the top of that with we we came out with several pumps. Each one of them has a has a a, a two inch inside diameter pipe pvc mm -hmm. pipe that goes up and feeds into a four inch so we can get like three two inches into a four and then that four inch just goes through a event opening in the building hmm. okay saves a lot of cleanup mm -hmm. even after the fact yeah it will i just know from other floods studying other floods that the primary thing is to get the water out before mold has a chance to grow. So even hours. if it's three or four days, you're start because it grows on the wood and you can't, you have to bleach and it's a mess. So getting it out immediately after the water recedes would be and key. turning on barn fans. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they can't store them in the basement. So, <laughs> but you, you know, assuming that, you could magically have those, but but at least getting the water out would be key. Yes. Because it's also not drinking water. <laughs> no. So um, we have been working very hard. Um, we are now working with fire safety. And there, so there were, pop, I, I would say that I'm certain there'll be another um, visit to you folks. And I'm sorry it's coming in pieces, but we're doing our best to get this building off of oil by the fall. And we're also now working, my draftsman actually came home from vacation early to draw this building. They measured it today. Um, we have to have proper drawings to talk to fire safety. And um, all of the things that Chris pointed out immediately have already been fixed. So we're working as hard as we can, but, um, and I apologize for coming in pieces, but, uh, as we get the information, we're processing it quickly. Again, one last quick question, just to re reiterate, what are the locations of the compressors for the heat pump system? The compressors, not the condensers. I'm the sorry, compressors. the condensers. Um, I drew on the site plan. Okay. Yeah. So there's the silo, there's the shed that's gonna be raised. Right. There's the roof condenser and there is the wall sort of condenser location. Right. Okay. Um, the, it's a little bit confusing, but the roof one is at um, above a two-story building on the top of a, it's a flat roof on top of a two-story building. Mm -hmm. We chose that roof because a, it's kind of central to the units that it would be serving, right. but also there is a way out that's easy for someone to go and maintain them. Okay. And then the one that's on the ground is as low as we could get it. Um, 
there is a photograph showing a mock-up on or just a line drawing. And um, we're kind of limited by that five foot flood height off the ground. So it would be mounted on the wall with brackets coming back to hold it up. Yeah. Uh, luckily there was a stretch of um, brick right next to the meters. The meters had also been relocated in um, the, the months after the flood. All of the electrical has been raised up to them out of the floodplain. So I've pulled up here on the screen where the wall unit condenser is going to go. It's kind of hard to see with the lights on, but it's drawn in red where. So it's basically right yep. there. Yep. And I just zoomed in so yep. you can see it's right next to the utility meters. And I had suggested a bush that was what the squiggly green is, but <laughs> I think the I, I really like the suggestion the group made of just having a, a lattice to to um, camouflage it. Right now, it seems the only color that's available is white, but I have seen other brands that have brown and black. So if we can get a darker one, we will, but we're, that's actually the hardest um, trade to get a quote from right now. So it's the least developed of the ones. But, but well, whatever color you end up with, whether it's a, a raw wood color or a color of white color, very easy to spray paint it. Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, North Branch Nature Center painted theirs blue. So yeah. we're, we're, I think Vince is happy to do whatever you folks like to um, keep this moving along. So if you would like it brown, I, I, or well, brick if, color or whatever. Whatever dark color you choose that makes it blend better into that space. So it's, I mean, a, a light color, white color, tan color is going to stand out. So any yeah. dark color, of lattice that you can surround it with is going to make it disappear. Well, if it's if it's more or less the same color or at least the same value as the brick, do you still want lattice around it, or will that just make it more? Assuming the lattice is going down to the ground, will that make it more obvious? Would it be better just to have this mounted on the wall, um, like the meter? That's up. I'm. Ambivalent. I mean, I whatever you can do to make it disappear or make it less conspicuous. Okay. Whether you paint paint the you know. Yeah, I'm with Steve. I think these things are ugly, and I hate them. Uh, and whatever can be done to be able to like, and especially on this building, uh, from to whatever to whatever screening you use or coloring you use to to make again to make it dark so it just sort of goes away yep yep the other thing you could do would be to plant a tall evergreen oh, so was the squiggly on, the, green. on the lawn outside yeah. of it so you can yeah. get behind it to service it but yet that would you know from the street if you could plant an evergreen that screened it so it disappeared, and again, that's just another way of screening it yep. uh, without messing with the unit itself. Yep, I mean, I mean totally. Which is where you put add bush. The green right? bushy <laughs> yeah. thing, yeah. <laughs> um, one thing I've noticed, I walked up and down the street many times to try to figure out what I would say in presentation, and I really like the wide lawn between 138, mm -hmm. and I'm guessing it's 140. Um, the um, old uh, Cameron um, Patterson Walk building. Yes. And um, it, it's one of the few places where you get a sense of the scale of the 19th century yards mm -hmm. going to the river. And so I wouldn't want to fill it up too much because I think that, that that's kind of a, it's a, it's a, one of those quiet, lush moments that we get in Montpelier of not being totally urban. Um, and so many are filled, of these side yards are now filled up with parking lots that it's rare. Yeah, so I agree with that. So if it, anything I we do, it probably should be tight to the building so it doesn't abrupt, you know, interrupt that, that space between the buildings. I do think that the manufacturers will tell you that putting lattice right up against them, they don't like that. Well, they, yeah, they don't want to impede the airflow through. Right. It's very right. key. That and you also, with the meters there, people have to be able to get to those meters and, and all of that. So maybe a 
uh, because of the short evergreen a shrubbery it makes, makes more sense a shortish evergreen makes more sense i don't know yeah i want it to be something that doesn't have a invasive root system mm -hmm. and again it could be something it could be placed because of the angle from the street it could be placed forward yep. of those units towards yep. the is that a bay or is that to go around it is a bay and that's kind of one of the issues there so when you could you could place it behind this window at the edge of the bay before it turns yeah and have something tall a, a little taller that would reach maybe the the top of the of the condenser unit but still be narrow enough so that it's not impeding the view out of the windows, but still would screen it from the. From it should the probably be something like a cedar that could be chopped at the top. Mm -hmm. um, because I remember uh, when I was working with the Unitarian Church, there are these scotch pines that take forever to grow, but they do grow. Yeah. And after a while, they um, damage the, the brick. Okay. So I'm hearing that um, painting it would be good, just in case there's some space through so that it fades away, but it would be preferable to have some kind of natural screen there and probably ditch the idea of the lattice. Okay. I think that's true. And with appreciation of your comment about the lawn, because I do hear that. And okay. so, so something tall mm -hmm. is just cutting up you off a bit not large and wide. Cause I, I think what I was mentioning when I drew that large thing was a lilac. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I didn't the, an evergreen that's got leaves on it and yep. January feels or needles on it. So but folks would be interested in a hemlock, a short hemlock that could just be kept lopped off at the right height. Either that or get something that's columnar. That's not going to get, well, more, that was the Unitarian church feet, issue. More than 10 feet. I say, it's going yeah. to limit, so you won't have to we cut it down. We couldn't find one. Okay, we can. I can ask again. Okay. Okay. And then I guess did. Had, Maybe we spoke about it in the last meeting, but the line sets that are coming out of this thing, where are they going? The idea we were thinking is that they'll be brown and that they're just going to run as, as minimally as they can along, you know, lines of the windows or the, the, the bay of the window, the bay. They're going to run level at some point and then go, or are they running horizontal all the way along it or are they going vertical also? We haven't had the person on site yet, so we. But we wanted to get this permitted so that as soon as it's available, we can build it. Um, the The idea would be that they'll be minimal. Most of them are going to be going to the back roof, so as few as we need. You mean the one, on the, mean the, one uh, the one right. on top? As few as right. possible going to this particular right. unit where people can see them. Right. I'm doing one now that has five um, AC unit or well heat pump units going to one condenser and they all collect in the basement and then go out as one one pipe so the line sets are all coming down to almost like it's like the reverse of a manifold and then going out but we can't use the basement so i can't answer that right now but i do know from getting reassurances from the contractor that it will they will be pretty small and they would be they can be brown so that they would be minimal on the outside of the building. And I think of like the gutter here is being black and the and the window trim all being black. Mm -hmm. Would you block me better? I would think if you could match the window trim in that gutter with those line sets, at least it would okay. have. At least where they run adjacent to the gutter and the window trim, but they have to stretch across their brick, brown would probably be better, right? So black line sets you know, were you vertical. Can, you can, if you can paint paint some black or something. Yeah, with your it, yeah it's a covering. Paint. So black line sets black were vertical and brown were horizontal. I mean, I'm thinking black everywhere. I feel like the brown, that's what I'm thinking. Just like you see the gutter line there, like 
that passes over. I feel like that gutter would look weird if it were painted brown, but I, it doesn't bother me being black. Whereas like, okay, um, I see Ben's point. Yeah, uh, that's fine. Yeah, absolutely fine. <laughs> I appreciate your thinking about it. Especially if it's mostly on this side of the building that's kept behind already, you're not gonna more black light isn't gonna like pop out as you're just walking by. Mm -mm. But something that's sort of like almost kind of the right kind of yeah. brown, but isn't. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, see what you're saying. Yeah, is odd. Odd. A, a brand new color that isn't on the building. Right. Gotcha. That looks like a cover up. <laughs> Do you feel that way about the condenser itself? I mean, I would also try to paint the, if you could paint the condenser to be similar to the window trim and just have it like be a black thing on the building. Okay, not brick color. That would be my preference. Okay. It's such a beautiful building. It is, and there's something very gracious about the black trim. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it really is. There are beautiful gold and dark green. High. It's actually a three color scheme. But I, I, obviously, you don't do that to a condenser. But um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a really beautiful, um, very dignified building. Yeah. Oops. Any other comments, questions, or suggestions? I did just put down a note that the heat pump condenser unit on the north side wall of the building may be either painted a dark color compatible with a brick color, and again, doesn't have to be a red or an orange color, or be screened using a dark color lattice or screened by landscaping to help make the condenser less noticeable from the main street view. Thank you. And then again, the lattice for the pellet silo can be a dark color compatible with the dark green color of the silo. Okay. And again, you're just trying to make the silo disappear as much as you can, okay. given its size and scale. It's sort of like the elephant in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else we should add or any other comments, questions, or suggestions? I think a, a very good presentation on yes. a complicated project. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Aaron. Very, very thorough. Thank and you. thank you for being so open to suggestions, too. Oh, yes. appreciate that. And for your sensitivity to an important building. Yeah. It, it's Quite one of my challenge. favorites yes. in town. <laughs> I can go through the criteria for the project. Exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. The removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize an historic property shall be avoided. Character defining features, finishes, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize an historic building shall be preserved. Uh, there's no deteriorated character defining features here, and there's no treatment that causes any damage to historic materials, so that's acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with amassing size, scale, architectural features, detailing, and overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, mechanical equipment, trash storage, and fencing shall be cited to minimize adverse visual impact or adequately and appropriately screened from public view. That's acceptable. Alterations to buildings called for by public safety, access accessibility, and fire codes shall be designed to maintain the character of the construction materials and features to the maximum event possible, acceptable. Height of building additions shall not overwhelm the primary facade, must consider varied heights of existing buildings and adjacent buildings, acceptable. 
Proportion, compatibility of relationship between width and height of facades, as well as relationship of width to height of windows and doors acceptable. Rhythm, the visual patterns established by the alterations of solid walls and openings, windows and doors in the facade of a building shall create a rhythm acceptable. Roof shape and equipment, consider similarity or compatibility with roof shapes in immediate area. Conceal rooftop equipment and features on flat roofs from eye level view from adjacent public rights of way and from the ground level of any adjacent properties acceptable. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, entablature, trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration of a building acceptable. Landscaping, screening, and site furnishings. Projects within the design review district and subject to the landscaping requirements in section 3203 shall consider the following. Site furnishings, including fencing, seating, other types of site furniture visible from the street or side yards. Does landscaping obscure or undermine key architectural patterns or elements on historic buildings in mechanical equipment screening? Historic, is Existing historic and contributing resources such as street trees, fences, gates, walls, steps, gazebos, walkways, front and side yard patterns shall be retained or restored when impacted by the alteration of a building. Walls and fences shall be compatible with a site and the building and scale, traditional materials and design that reflect the period of the building and or is compatible with the surrounding context acceptable. I think there's a lot of things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all exterior. Yes. Yeah. Windows and doors on historic structures. Character defining windows and door patterns, placement sizes, proportions, and original features, such as trim, sash, and molding, shall be preserved to the extent possible. When preservation is not possible, such character defining windows and doors must be rehabilitated or replaced in kind. Windows and doors that are not character defining may be replaced, but such replacements must be compatible with the historic building style, materials, and architectural features. And lastly, porches and stairs on historic structures. The location of porches, ramps, and stairs shall be placed in a manner that does not impact or undermine the original and significant ornamentation or detailing of the existing building. Stairs, ramps, and porches sh shall employ suitable detailing to connect and be compatible with historic and important design features of existing buildings and new construction. Stairs and ramps shall be designed in a manner with details and materials that provide the most sensitive and compatible structure and that fits to the building design and layout. Uh, we didn't actually make any changes to where the stairs and stuff are. Sorry. And that's okay. I'll just call that not applicable. Based on that, and with the last two suggestions, do I hear speak your name to vote for the application? This is Martha. I say yes. <laughs> this is Ben. I say yes. Eric says yes. And Steve says yes. So four to zero in favor. So if you could come up and sign this, mm -hmm. and that'll let us move forward with the, with the permit. Um, okay. We have about you know, nine minutes before the other meeting is supposed to start. It would be, oh, uh, yeah, you come in and, yeah, you don't, you, we have to, we have to, we have to, we have to do the site plan. We'll, we'll let you know when you can come and get everything. <laughs> yep, <laughs> we'll let you know. I'll email you. Okay. Um, I'll just put a note here to email you when when the rest is ready. It's okay. Um, Perfect. So we do have minutes that are here, two sets of minutes. But the thing you really, we really need your input on um, is the city manager's draft proposal about parklet approval. So the city council is going to be considering revisiting the parklet ordinance that got tweaked during um, COVID pandemic to reduce the approvals needed to have a parklet and loosen up what could be in the parklet. 
They want to move back to the more formal parklets that are structures, not just a fence off area with seating like they have on some of the ones on Langdon Street. Um, and the city manager's proposal actually completely removes design review committee from looking at those more permanent type approvals and structures. And so we're looking for design review committees input on whether or not they still want to have a role in reviewing parklet permits. So this is the ones that are just seasonal and take over um, parking spaces, up to two parking spaces per parklet. A couple, couple of things I noticed. One is to call these parklets is a little funny because they have nothing to do with parks. Oh, yeah. Don't don't even get into the defined terms and the confusion no. that causes because <laughs> trust me, I've had all sorts of discussions yeah, the about that. The other thing I noticed is that there's there's all kinds of dates involved in this, but there's no language that says that either the permit or limit the date. Yeah. Uh, limit the dates of when the parklet can be there. Yes. Okay. I, I and it may be there, but I, I read through it a couple of times and couldn't find it. Um, and, and I think I the design review answer. of these things is very important. I do too. And again, there there's the potential if somebody is proposing something before it's actually built, uh, there's a chance for people with experience with them. Uh, I mean, you're on building uh, experience that I consider it as a valuable resource. And if they want to come through without having to pay a fee or, I mean, whatever they would like to do to expedite it, if they don't want the, you know, the, the prescribed waiting periods, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I, I think it would be helpful to people to have people look at it. And again, based on the experience on this committee, we could maybe make suggestions, maybe save them some money building the thing. Parklets are expensive. Good parklets are very expensive. Yeah. So do and you want to make sure they last and you want to make the labor putting them together and taking them apart easy. And then you've got to store the thing off season someplace. So a modular modular components is is the way to do it. And I want people to take it seriously that they're what they're building and putting in the streets and making it look nice. And so I think by having the step to come see us is a and again, if there's a way we can expedite it so it's it's quick and quick and clean. Yeah, the, and the, I have no objection on that. If you, State if Street you wait, uh, waiting period change the character of that street. Yeah, I mean it would not it would not be a zoning permit. It right, would still right. be some other aspect of permit where they there isn't the appeal period or anything like that, but DRC still only meets at max twice a month. I, I, so, I don't see that if they're doing reasonable planning that this on review is somebody wants to put one up, they're not gonna put it up before what's your earliest they can put them up now end of May. I think so. So yeah. if they want to come in see us, you know. March or April, if you know, contemplating putting something up to boost their business in the summer months. Uh, again, we can make it quick and easy. But again, there's too much experience, to which I consider to be a valuable resource. Mm -hmm. you're, you're making all the arguments I've been making, so it's nice to hear. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, so it, it, that's our it, strong suggestion. <laughs> I mean, one of the things that uh, I think is important is that they be removed on time may not be installed early because they do really change the streetscape. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and that I'll look back through this to make sure there is a, a specific window in there because that's also really, really important for Department of Public Works. Yeah. Those windows are often bound by, you know, snow issues, cleaning yeah. the streets, all of that. Um, so I'll make sure, I'll double check and review it because uh, the manager's office is taking in, in addition to your comment specifically on design reviews role, planning department is giving a lot of departmental feedback as well. Yeah. But I'll make sure to double check do you, that. Do you want to vote on this? We don't, I don't need a vote. I just, okay. I needed input from you. Um, we have three minutes. Is it awful if I asked you to delay the, unless somebody- Has, has anybody a had motion. a chance to look at the minutes? 
Yes, and I have a change on yep. the one from the 20th. <laughs> I will approve all of both spending. Okay. Well, Actually, now you I, can throw in the change. I'm going to put a change in the ones for the June 20th. We only had that one application, 18, 118 Berry Street. Uh -huh. yep. And right in the middle of the longer paragraph, yep. it says the building shall have a horizontal window installed to visually replicate the double hung windows. What we said was to have a horizontal munion. Ah, thank you. Awesome. That's Thank all. you very much. Okay, so Eric. Would, would that change? Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes from for June the 20th? I so move. So move. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And 20th is approved. And how about do I hear a motion to approve the July the 18th? So moved. All in favor? Martha. Aye. I wasn't here. Wait, okay. Wait, who, who I, seconded that? I did. <laughs> okay. She, that was a quick, quick, quiet second. Everybody second. And I'm in favor. So, so 3 0, motion. 4 0, got it. <laughs> yes. And do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> adjourn. And we had a minute and a half left. Thank you, guys. <laughs>